going here with how to overcome the fear of failure. Look, if you've ever started something and not finished it, if you've ever failed at something and given up, you really want to watch this video and make sure you stay with me until the end, not the end of your life, the end of this video because I'm going to really share with you a powerful tool that you can really help to smash through your fear. This is a subject I'm deeply passionate about. This was actually an international best-selling book I wrote, Fear Busting. But let me share with you what I'm going to take you through today. We're going to look at really what fear actually is. Why we actually have it, what it is, why it is, when do we experience it? Rob, who's Rob? Rob is what fear has robbed you from in your life. What you need to learn, this is a rubber duck, you're going to find out why. You're going to see why it's important to have fear, to put fear in the back seat always, not the back seat of your car. This is always there because you don't want a life without fear. Then I'm going to show you something really simple to do so that you can become really skillful at moving through your life in a way where you progress. So if you're ready, say, I'm ready. Good. I can hear you. So what really is fear? It's a natural response. In fact, did you know what the most common fear in the world is? Any ideas? Well, apparently it's public speaking, but no one was born with that fear. When we look at fear, fear really is something we have within us to help us survive. And there are only two natural fears. Do you know what they are? Fear of falling and fear of loud noises. We have those fears built within our DNA for our survival. Look, the reality is we are not really designed to live in the world that we're living in now because we are still programmed in a way that where we needed to survive because that was what life was all about. Once upon a time, you really were on your guard all the time because we were small creatures surrounded by bigger creatures that basically wanted to take us away. So if you came out of where you lived, not your house, a cave or wherever it was, and let's say you saw a beautiful rainbow and there was a saber-toothed tiger right there looking at you, you probably wouldn't have just said, hold on a sec, mate, and looked at the rainbow. You would have felt the fear, and the fear was there to help you do two things, either to run away or attack. In that case, I don't know about you, I probably would have run away. So fear is a natural response and you don't want to lose it, you just want to start using it. And I know you've probably heard many popular sayings about fear like, feel the fear and do it anyway and there's no such thing as failure, only feedback. Now these are really nice things to hear, but really what I want to give you is a different perspective. Because it's really when your perspective changes that you really start to be able to do some magic. And this is what you're going to take away from today. And I think that this video, if you really take some time to really apply what I'm saying to you, you'll look at fear in a different way because you can't get rid of it. So what is it? It's a natural response. Why do we have it? We have it to survive. What are the natural fears? Fear of falling because we can't fly. Well, we can, but just not for very long, right? Because we don't have wings. And noise, that's, if we hear a really loud noise, that's a sign just to, that we are in danger. So when do we have it? Now this is really interesting because what most of us have started to experience in life is too much fear. Why? Well, it's a very easy emotion to prey on people because when we feel fear, some of us will behave in a way that maybe some people would like us to behave in a way. Perhaps when we feel that we are not good enough. We fear that we're going to make a mistake. We fear that we are not going to get the result that we want. And it's really fascinating to think of fear like this. If you feel any form of uncertainty, you're probably going to feel some fear. If, you f if you, there's going to be some change, you might feel some fear. If you feel that you're going to be going to be some attention on you, you could feel some fear. If you feel that something is going to be a struggle, you might feel some fear. So what do so many of us do when we feel fear? We move away from the situation rather than taking the situation on. So you can't get rid of this part of your programming. You need to learn how to use it in a way 
where you can make progress in your life. Does this make sense? Are you with me? Because really what I want you to think about is all the times in your life where you have been robbed from getting the results that you want because you faced something that, that was uncertain or you were put in a position where, do I change? Do I stay here? Or the attention was on you? I don't know whether you ever remember being asked at school if anyone's got any questions and you didn't want to put your hand up even though you had something you wanted to say because you were frightened that everyone would be looking at you if you thought you were going to struggle with something. Again, so many of us have put ourselves in a place where we've never really put our best foot forwards. So let me ask you a question. What do you think is the first sign of madness? I once heard that it was having hairs on the palm of your hands. Whew. If you have them, maybe you are mad. But really, I heard that one of the signs of madness is talking to yourself. Now, if that was the case, we're all a bit crazy, right? Because we all talk to ourselves. And the way I help people understand what fear is, there is a part of you that wants you to stay where you are. There's a part of you that doesn't want you to be in a situation where you're under attack. There is a part of you that doesn't want you to be rejected. Have you ever felt rejection? Actually, rejection, when we feel it, it hurts. Have you ever felt rejected by someone? You thought that someone didn't like you or someone actually said, I don't want to be with you anymore and you felt that rejection? Rejection hurts. But we have that again as a primal instinct. Because once upon a time when we were living in little groups, if you felt rejection, that was the time the fear response would really kick in because it's like, well, if I'm rejected, guess what? You're not going to survive very long on your own. Human beings thrive when we are together. So what's really important to understand that there is a part of you that wants you to stay where you are. There's a part of you that doesn't want you to make mistakes. There's a part of you that thinks that where you are is where you need to be. And every time you, you step forwards into a way where you might be moving away from who you thought you were, you hear a voice in your head. I think of it like a duck. A duck that quacks away and says, no, don't do that, you're going to fail. Don't do that, stay here. Don't do that because you could look stupid. Don't do that because you could get rejected. And guess what? You're never going to get rid of that voice. It's always going to be there. Everyone has it. I don't know what happened to you when you woke up this morning, but it probably didn't take very long until there was a part of you that was saying, look, stay here, and another part that's saying, let's go. And most of us, unfortunately, listen way too much to that negative part of us. And what I'd like you to think about is, how could you use this? How could you learn to use this part of you that wants you to stay where you are? You know, not long ago, I was talking to a doctor. and we were, we, He listened to me talk, and he came up to me afterwards, and he said, you know you talk about the duck. He said, you know what, wouldn't it be great if people could see the duck in their head telling them they couldn't do something? So another part of them would say, okay, let me show you what I can do. You're never going to get rid of that negative voice. You're never going to get rid of feeling fear. The challenge that you have is to learn how to use it in a way where it's always there. It's always in the back seat. It's always there in a way that could indicate to you that now is the time to take action. The hardest thing to do is just get started. The fear of fear is worse than the actual fear itself in most cases. We were involved with some studies many years ago with people who hated maths and we wired up their brains and we got them to think about maths and even when they were thinking about it Fear responses, pain responses turned on in their brain. But you know what? Once they started, the fear and the pain receptors turned off. The hardest thing to do is just get started. And I would love you to really start knowing that when that fear kicks in, because there's something you need to do and there's a bit of fear there, just get started on those things. And it's before you know it, the fear will go away. And the more you do this, guess what starts to happen? You create new neurological pathways in your brain and you can really get 
really good at moving through fear. Look, lastly, where do you think your potential of what you're capable of doing exists? It exists in your ability to keep moving forwards. So the next time you feel some fear, ask yourself, how could I use this fear? How could I say to that part of me, whether you think of it as a duck or however you want to think of it, to say almost like, thank you very much for giving me this fear. Now is the time to act. Look, a great life, it doesn't happen by chance. It happens by design. Take some time to think about this, not too long before you start acting, and you'll see the difference that really, really makes the difference. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.